Hello everyone, I'm Marcus from LearningTheSciSkill.com Welcome to the second video of Machine Learning with Python tutorial series So in the last video, I have introduced to you what is machine learning and what are its application area what are its advantages and we also talk about what are the techniques that we are going to cover in this tutorial series and in this video, I'm going to first cover the linear regression which is also one of the most basic techniques and if you happen to browse through my website, learndatasidescale.com, you probably see that I have written an article regarding linear regression with using R. So in the beginning of the article, I have uh, talked about a little bit of concept behind the linear regression. And if you just look at my website, uh, linear regression is actually a technique which predicts the value of a dependent variable uh, which is also known as response variable on the basis of one or more independent variables or also known as predictor variables so linear regression can be divided into two types which is the simple linear regression or multiple linear regression the difference between them are just the number of independent variables so in the case of simple linear regression we basically have one dependent variable which is y and then we also have one independent variable which is x so this is the formula that defines the simple regre linear regression which is very similar to y equal to mx plus c that we have learned in our secondary or primary school and for multiple linear, equation, multiple linear equation, the difference is only that we have more than one independent variables uh, in order to predict the dependent variable. So this is the formula of y uh, of multiple linear equation. You can see that we have one dependent variables, which is the y, and then we have more than one independent variables, which is the x. So, uh, in order to determine how good is your linear regression model, we have to uh, look at R-square, which we are also going to look at it in our uh, practical example later. But uh, R-square basically range between 0 and 1. Uh, 0 simply means that there is no correlation in the sample data, and 1 represents the exact linear relationship. So. We actually want to look for high R square value, which means that your model is good. Your there is a strong correlation correlation between the response uh, and the predicted variables. Uh, but if you get a very low R square value, it simply means that your model is not good enough, or probably your independent variables are, are not uh, related to the uh, dependent variables. Therefore, you probably want to look for other independent variables or increase your sample size or recollect your data and so on. So these are some formulas which you can use to calculate R square value. But I'm not going to go through in detail because I want to focus on how you can quickly create some code to uh, write some code in linear regression to solve a particular problem. So we are going to pay more effort onto that and if you have some time please feel free to go through this article even though it's in R uh, programming different programming language but then the concept is almost certainly uh, similar so in this tutorial we're going to use Python and uh, the IDE that we're going to use will be the Google Core Lab which is the one of the uh, free software that we can use uh, for data science purpose so to start with that you uh, just go to google.com and then uh, search for google collab and then yeah the first one will be the the google collab and just need to click it and in order to create a new notebook you just click the new notebook and then it will generate a new notebook for us so this is the interface of uh, google collab and you probably want to rename the title of the notebook to the name you want in this case call it uh, linear equation uh, tutorial one okay so after you have created your notebook in Google Collab, the next thing that you want to do is to go to this link 
to download the data set that we want to use today and this is a csv file uh, with the file name of ads revenue.csv and inside this csv file you're going to see a, a data set which consists uh, of the the revenue of ads uh, of a company by making a uh, the advertisement in different social media platforms such as Google, Facebook, and Instagram, and uh, also there are factors such as whether the area is a big area or a small area, and also whether the area is a rural area or urban area or suburban area. So uh, just go ahead and download this data and save it in one of your folder, which you can access easily. And I'm going to group. I'm going to close this because I've already downloaded it. So I have saved it in my folder. So in order to read this file into Google Colab, uh, I'm going to show you how to do that later. But the first thing that you normally have to do is to first load in some library that you want to use. So because uh, there are quite a lot of codes here, I'm not just going to I'm going to just copy and paste it uh, to save time of everyone. Copy and paste. And, and uh, let me just um, briefly explain through what uh, this slide are referring to. Uh, the first one is a map poly inline, it's just to make sure that our chart is displayed inside this uh, number every time we run every uh, uh, any uh, map poly code. And then we have pandas, which uh, we want to use it to read the data frame, and numpy. Uh, and then we also have Seabond uh, that is uh, on top of the map poly, but then Seabond makes the chart prettier. And then we also have uh, map poly that is import for the purpose of data visualization. And uh, config inline backend figure underscore format equal to retina. Run this if you have a HD monitor. And lastly, we want to initialize our uh, Seabond uh, chart engine. So go ahead and run that by shift enter. All right, now we have successfully import of a library. The next thing, which is a step two, is to import our data. So in order to import our data from our local folder into uh, Google Colab, what we have to do is to run these two lines of simple code from google.colab import files and then uh, upload it which is a variable is like a file stop upload go ahead and run this and then if you ask you if you ask if you are, if you ask you to choose the file that you want to upload and then once you have selected and when it is hundred percent done we can see that there is a file icon here if you open it you will see that your CSV file is successfully uploaded here. So now we can actually run uh, uh, df.head to see uh, uh, the first few lines of data. Oops. Yeah, oh, we missed one step in which uh, we have to uh, create the data frame uh, by reading the file. To, I have already read in this CSV file into this data frame and the next thing which is step 3 is that I can uh, explore the data so what I can do is df.head which I can look at the first few lines of data so um, yeah from here we can see that there are several columns Google, Facebook, and Instagram these are in the thousands of uh, units of uh, advertisements and then we also have revenue in uh, thousands of dollars so 22.1 means 22.1 thousand dollars and then we also have size of the area large or small and then whether the area is a rural area or the urban area or even a suburban area 
So the next thing we can do in terms of exporting data, we can also use df.info. So now we can see that we have 200 lines of data and then we have total six columns and for Google, Facebook, Instagram revenue, they are actually belongs to a float data. But then we have size and area which are classified as object data. We are going to have problem if we have object data in our data frame, if you want to use them for regression. So in here we have to transform this object uh, data into something that we can use uh, for the purpose of regression. And what we're going to do here is we are going to change these tags into some kind of numbers uh, so that uh, we can use them for the purpose of uh, regression. And this method is called dummy variable. If you are if you just Google search for dummy variable, you will see a lot of explanations. But let me quickly go through uh, what does that require and then we look at the results so that you will understand what I'm talking about. Um, so here we come to uh, step 4, which is called exploratory data analysis and data wrangling. And what we want to do here is we want to de define a new object data frame which is equal to the R current data frame and then we are going to select only those which the data types is equal to object. Go to object and then copy run it. And then we are going to say um, here in order to uh, um, do a transformation, we need to use a label encoder function for scikit-learn package. And for that, we have to import scikit-learn and from scikit-learn import pre-processing. And then let's define a variable called uh, Label make is equal to pre processing dot label encoder and then for the column in the object data frame dot columns dot values we create um, we create some new columns um, based on the current column which belongs to the object data type. So we are going to say column and new column and string sorry, is equal to um, label encoder dot fit transform and then the O column. If you run this and then the F dot hit, you are going to see that we have two new columns. So here, size new column is created based on size column, and then large is then represent in zero, and small is represent in one. An area new column is created based on area column and ruler is represented in zero, urban is represented in two, suburban is represented in one. And uh, let's drop drop out this size and area column and then we're gonna run the df.info again to see what kind of data they are now. So in order to drop out uh, df.drop and then we're gonna see size area and then we are going to say one because we want to drop the uh, the, uh, the column but not the col uh, the rows uh, and then in place equal to true and then ef dot info excellent so now you can see that uh, the new columns that are created are integer instead of object 
So integer and float can be used in a regression without any problem. So um, I think uh, I want to stop here for this video because uh, this video has become very long. So in the next video, we are going to do more exploration of the data and probably we are going to train our model and, uh, and also make our prediction. And uh, I will see you in the next video.